Hi, have you ever wondered how the clean and dirty indicator on a vacuum cleaner works? Well, in today's video, we will find out. What I have here is the circuit board for the clean and dirty detection mechanism from my old Hoover vacuum cleaner. I was going to toss the vacuum out the other day, but thought I'd take a look before doing so. And I'm glad I did. The circuit here is surprisingly elegant in many ways. The first thing I thought that was very clever is how the power was delivered to this board. And if you notice that there is no transformer, no resistor, or capacitor dropper. So the AC input was actually delivered from the windings of the stator coil on the motor. Um, I threw away the, uh, the motor and the rest of the vacuum cleaner stuff, so unfortunately I cannot show you. But as you can see, this capacitor is connected directly to the input and is rated only at 50 volts uh, at 10 microfarads. So clearly, this was not a mains input. For consumer products like vacuum cleaners, the profit margin is typically very thin. So manufacturers try to trim cost whenever possible. By not using a dropper resistor or dropper capacitor, they can probably save at least 50 cents. And the tap on the uh, coil is virtually free since they have an electric motor there anyway. So it's pretty clever. Another thing that you notice almost immediately is that this board is really simple. There's almost nothing on it except for this LM324 quad op amp. So you might wonder how this actually works. Well, it all lies uh, in the sensor that it's using. So let's take a look at what kind of sensor this board is using. Well, as you can see here, it's also nothing, nothing fancy. It's just a standard electric microphone. And the original microphone actually was actually stuck onto the uh, casing with glue, and I couldn't take it off, so I had to solder on a spare one that I have, but it should work exactly the same way. So now, before we go further into analyzing how the circuit works, let's uh, first take a look at uh, it's wor uh, it working in action. So let me hook it up, and we'll see. So let me, uh, by the way, I just used a, uh, now for, for this demonstration, I used a uh, AC power source that is at roughly 16 volts. So let me plug it in and uh, it should turn green. So which means right now everything is clean, the vacuum. Now, let me blow some air into this uh, microphone. And as you can see, as soon as I started blowing air, it turns red, okay? So obviously, uh, the circuit is tuned to certain frequencies and certain type of sound so that, uh, uh, you know, when the vacuum is on, the motor itself actually doesn't trigger this uh, behavior. But, but if I, you know, started tapping on it, and you can see that it turns red. So let's uh, use an oscilloscope to take a look at the signal coming out from this LM324 so that we can understand the circuit a little better. Let me hook it up and uh, I'll be right back. So here is our setup. Let me explain uh, it a little bit. So basically this wire comes in uh, is from a signal generator that uh, output a fixed amplitude sine uh, wave into the uh, microphone input. And that's because you know when I blow on the microphone, it's not uh, uniform and it's difficult to analyze the waveform. So we would just use a standard uh, waveform instead. And this probe, uh, the first channel, is probing the output from the first op amp, and the second probe is probing the output from the second out op amp. So let's take a look after I turn on the uh, output from the signal generator. And you notice that actually the green light is still on. That's because the amplitude right now is relatively low. So if I increase the signal amplitude, you'll see that uh, right now it's 20 millivolts. Let me do it go to 30, 40, 50. And now you see that actually the red light started lighting up. So here is uh, the signal back to 20. 
and uh, so if I increase, decrease, okay, so now this is a 20 millivolts peak to peak. So as you can see that uh, the output from the first amplifier it's uh, this little one, which is already uh, maybe at a, sitting at one volt. So clearly the first stage is uh, amplifying the signal to uh, this level, and the second stage amplifies it even further to this larger uh, waveform. Now, there may be some uh, bandpath filtering going on given the, uh, the capacitors in here, at which uh, uh, I can definitely see that uh, the signal amplitude actually not only is affected by the stage output, but also is affected by our uh, frequency of the uh, of the signal input. So let's right now we're sitting at 3.1 kilohertz. So if we decrease the uh, the frequency, you will see that uh, the amplitude drops significantly. So clearly, there's a high pass filter somewhere. And if we increase the uh, frequency, you can see that uh, the response, frequency response, goes uh, much stronger. So basically, this is uh, the result of a, uh, a filter of some kind of some sort. So now after we took a look at the first two amplifying stage, we will uh, concentrate on, let's uh, remove this probe. So let's take a look at uh, the output from uh, the third well, the fourth amplifier, okay. And right now you can see that uh, the channel two output is sitting at zero. This channel one output is the output from the first stage of the amplifier. And the, right now the output for channel, from channel two, which is uh, the fourth uh, op amp, is at zero. So really there's nothing going on. Right now the input signal is actually at 20 millivolts peak to peak. So let me increase that a little bit. So 30. You can see that uh, we're triggering on channel 2 right now. So basically, if I just uh, reduce the time base, you can see that it's being triggered. So clearly, this is a comparator of some sort that uh, triggers the signal once it's above certain threshold. And now, if like, let's take a look at. Uh, um, actually, this is just at the borderline. If you take a look at. Uh, the actual LED output, you can see that uh, the green one occasionally flashes. So this is at right around the threshold. Okay, so let's increase a little more to, let's say 40 millivolts. So now the output is actually uh, going high most of the time. So now we're here, you can see that the red is on solid. So let's take a look at what is the output from the other op amp, okay. So for that, let me hook it up. By the way, let me just show you here. So this is our last op amp we haven't probed yet. So let's see that. Okay. So now let's take a look at the output. And as we can see here, the output from the second channel is sitting uh, high, at high output level. Right now, this is for the input level of 50 millivolts peak to peak. So if we reduce the uh, input level to 20. You will see that the output from the third op amp drops back to almost zero, and the light here turn back to green again. So let's increase that again, and you will see that uh, this time it turns uh, red, and our screen, the voltage, turns high, and we go back to 20 millivolts. Uh, sorry. And it turns low, and here it turns green. So now I think we have a pretty clear understanding of how the circuit works. Basically, the signal from the electric microphone comes in and being amplified by this two-stage op amps, and uh, there's some bent path limiting uh, going on here, after which we then send the signal to the third and fourth uh, op amp, which forms as comparators. And the, the final output signal actually drives these two LEDs. So the concept here is really simple, and uh, this is a really clever idea for utilizing this op amp to detect uh, op amp and the electric microphone to detect whether or not 
the output from uh, the vacuum cleaner is dirty. So I suspect the dirty part comes from the, uh, the dust hitting the wall of the uh, wind tunnel and generates some sort of, uh, uh, you know, pulsed uh, signal from the, uh, from the electric microphone. And that signal is being picked up and uh, depends on the bandwidth and limiting it actually triggers this uh, uh, clean dirty indicator just like when we were blowing on this uh, microphone like that so there are some other cir circuit here I didn't describe and this one is actually for uh, the sensitivity of this output so my guess is that's probably just adjusting either the value of the uh, uh, amplifying amplifier or you know adjusting the time constants of this output stage uh, or both so there's not too much to that and that's pretty much how this clean and dirty indicator circuit works so this pretty much wraps up our discussion of this clean and dirty indicator board of a vacuum cleaner and as you can see the cost of this board is extremely low. It only basically the, the major cost is this switch and uh, this op amp and probably a few connectors here. But other than that, everything here is uh, you know pretty cheap, all the pa passives. And uh, so really there is no use, no need for a microcontroller or some kind of uh, uh, more complex circuit imp implementation. This apparently is good enough for them to detect the dirty and clean uh, of the vacuum. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I also hope you learned something new here. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe. I will catch up with you next time.